Solar energy is growing fast in Zimbabwe, and lithium batteries are now at the heart of every modern solar system. But with so many options out there, how do you know which one is best for you? In this video, I'll briefly explain how a lithium battery works in simple ways, and then share five important things you must check before buying one, so you don't waste money or end up with a battery that fails too soon. Now, let us start with what is inside the lithium battery. The first items inside the lithium battery are the lithium battery cells. The lithium cells are made using lithium ion phosphate, hence their name Life PO4. Think of them like the Jojo tank at your house. Just as the Jojo tank stores water for when the cans of water is not available, these cells store electricity for when the sun is shining as well. But here is the catch. Not all cells are equal. Cheap batteries often use poor quality cells, just like cheap phone with a tiny memory. They may work at first, but they will not last as long. The stronger the lithium battery cells are, the more the battery will last as well. The other thing inside the lithium battery are the battery cell connections. Now, Lithium battery cells are joined together with metal strips called buspers. They are like the pipes that move water from one Jojo tank to the other. If the connections are solid, the batteries run smoothly. If they are weak or poorly made, you will get overheating, wasted power, and sometimes even fires. High quality lithium batteries also come with high quality connections. So make sure you watch this video to the end so you can learn how to pick a good lithium battery. The next component inside the lithium battery is the battery management system or the BMS. This is like the brains of the lithium battery. It's like the safety officer making sure no cells are overcharged, over discharged or left unbalanced. A good BMS can even talk to your inverter through a data cable so your inverter knows exactly what's happening inside the battery. So, this implies that different batteries come with different BMSs and you would want to pick a battery with a very strong BMS so that your battery cells remain happy and last longer. This then brings us to the last component you get inside the lithium battery, which are the sensors and the sensor wires. These collect data from each cell and feed it to the BMS. Without them, the BMS would not know what's happening and your battery will just be running blind. So, imagine if a lithium battery is equipped poorly with, with uh, uh, poorly designed sensors. Would it give accurate information to the BMS? You would agree with me that it would mislead the BMS a lot. So, choosing a good lithium battery avoids you unknown headaches as well as heartaches. Now, before we dive into the five things to check before buying a lithium battery, let me just say this. Some of these points can get a little bit technical. That's why your first step should be to talk to a trusted technician or engineer before you make a purchase. I will explain everything here in simple words so you can follow along. But when it comes to buying and installing, professional guidance is very key. The very first thing you need to check before buying a lithium battery is the BMS. The battery management system. Why is that? Because the BMS is the brain and the bodyguard of your battery. Without it, your cells can overcharge, which can lead to battery swelling, overheating, or even battery catching fire. Without the BMS, over discharge can also happen which will also lead to loss of lifespan and early death of the battery. Without a proper BMS as well, your cells can go unbalanced and that is where some cells weaken faster than others, so the whole battery fails too soon. In short, the BMS is what makes a lithium battery safe and long-lasting. Without the BMS, a battery is just a box of, a box of cells waiting to give you problems. Here are the key things to check about the BMS before the purchase. Number one, check the manual first. 
Any serious battery manufacturer will explain the BMS clearly in the manual. It should tell you what the BMS does and how it reads basic information like charge, alarms, and battery status. If there is no manual or no mention of the BMS at all, that is a red flag. You better walk away. Number two, look for display LEDs or indicators. Good batteries have a small screen or LED lights or indicators showing how much energy is left in the battery, whether it's charging, whether it's discharging, or whether there are any alarms. Some even let you see each cell's health. Think of it like a car dashboard. You should never drive blind without a car dashboard. The same, you should never run a battery blind without a BMS. Number three, switch the BMS on and off. A proper BMS lets you turn the battery power on and off electronically. Yes, many batteries also have a second breaker on the side, but the real control should still be through the BMS itself. If it can only switch on and off through the breaker at the side and not through the BMS, that is a red flag. Walk away. Number four, check inverter communication. A quality BMS comes with a data cable. And I repeat, a data cable, usually with an RJ45 termination, just like an Ethernet cable, to connect directly to your inverter BMS port. This is how your inverter knows the battery state of charge, the cell temperatures, and the alarms. The best batteries communicate smoothly with trusted inverter brands like Victron, Sunsync, Day, Dynes, Focus, Growart, Kodak, Solis, and others. Why does this matter? Because many manufacturers only honor warranties if the battery is talking properly to the inverter through a designated data cable or passage. So always remember, good batteries work well with other good equipment. If your battery cannot communicate with standard inverters, it usually means the manufacturer still has a long way to go. So before you buy, make sure your lithium battery has a working active BMS with cell balancing. That's the difference between a battery that dies in three years or less and the one that saves you more faithfully for 10 or more. All right. So your battery BMS is there and it's good. And the cells are safe and it can talk to your inverter. But can it actually handle the kind of power you need every day? That's where the C rating comes in, which is the second thing you need to check before you buy a lithium battery. So what is the C rating? It is simply a measure of how much power your battery can give out at once or how fast it can safely recharge without damaging itself permanently. Think of it like a horsepower of a car. A small car with a small engine will struggle to tow a trailer. In the same way, a low C rated battery struggles when you try to power heavy appliances. Why does this information matter to you? If you are running heavy appliances like bowl pumps, welding machines, heating elements, booster pumps, power tools, you need a higher C rating battery. Otherwise, you will be forced to install more batteries so they can share the big burden. For lighter appliances like lights, Wi-Fi, and TV, a lower C rating battery is usually fine. But here's a quick example. If you have a 100 AH 48 volt lithium battery rated 1C, it can easily give 100 amps continuously. But if it is rated 0.5C, it can only give 50 amps. So the 1C battery is stronger and usually more expensive, but it lasts longer and heavy use. For most lithium iron phosphate batteries, the common sweet spot is between 0.5C to 1C. Staying within that range helps preventing overheating, extends lifespan of the battery, and keeps your system safe. And here is the truth. The C rating is one of the reasons why some lithium batteries are cheap while others cost more. It also tells you how many batteries of a particular brand you actually need. So, it will not also necessarily mean that all batteries with a slightly lower C rating are bad, but it would also give you an indication of if you are using a, a low C rating battery, how many pieces you need at a time. So my advice, if the seller 
or the manufacturer doesn't mention the C rating or even worse, doesn't know what it means, please walk away. That is a clear saying that the battery is not designed for serious solar use. And do not worry about calculating this on your own. A good installer or engineer can easily match the right C rating to your needs. That is what they are for, isn't it? Okay, so you've got the safety communication on, the power capability discovered, but how long will the battery actually last before it fades away? That's where these charge cycles come into play. Another key thing to check is the charge cycles of the battery. Many people think batteries are measured in years, but actually they are measured in cycles. So what is a cycle? One cycle is when you fully charge your battery and then fully discharge it. Think of it like the mileage of a car. The more kilometers you drive, the more the car ages. With lithium batteries, the more cycles you put on them, the more they age as well. Why does this information matter? If you buy a small battery for big power needs, you will cycle it many times every day and it will wear out much faster. But if you size your battery properly, the cycles are spread more gently and the battery lasts much longer. Here's the difference. Good quality lithium batteries can give you 4,000 cycles or more. That's about 10 plus years of daily use. While it's cheaper batteries, can give you only 1,000 to 2,000 charge cycles, which is less than three years before they fade away. But here's something most people do not know. The C rating of the battery also affects its lifespan. The C rating tells you how fast a battery can safely charge or discharge. For example, a certain brand of a lithium battery is rated for over 6,000 charge cycles. But that can only be achieved when you discharge it down to 10% and under a C rating of 0.2C and under stable conditions like 25 degrees Celsius. That means if you push the battery harder by pulling more power than its rating allows or charging it too quickly, you will reduce its cycles and the battery won't last as promised. So what is the key lesson here? When checking the battery cycles, don't just look at the number. Also check the conditions the manufacturer used to get to that number. And always get a knowledgeable technician to match the C rating of the battery with your actual usage. That way, you will know how long your investment will last you. Now, even if you pick a strong battery, if it's the wrong size for your needs, you will still run into problems. Let's talk about that. The battery bank size. All right, let's clear up one of the biggest misunderstandings about batteries here. A lot of people think that if you have a 5 kVA inverter, you just need a 48 volt battery, and that's all. Or if you have a 3 kVA inverter, all you need is a 24 volt battery. While that sounds right, it actually misses the most important part. Here is the truth. The voltage doesn't tell you the whole size of the battery. What really matters is the amount of energy the battery can store, and that's measured in kilowatt hours. Let me give you a quick example. A 48 volt 100AH lithium battery stores about 4.8 kilowatt hours of energy, while at least a 50AH 48 volt battery stores only 2.4 kilowatt hours energy. And interestingly, a 100 AH 24 volt battery also stores 2.4 kilowatt hours, the same as the smaller 48 volt battery one. So you see, it's not just about 24 volt or 48 volts. What really matters is how much energy in kilowatt hours the battery can actually hold. Now, here's why this is important for you. If your battery is too small for your needs, you will cycle it deeply every single day and will wear out very fast. If your battery is too big for your needs, you will spend a lot of money and you may even struggle to keep all the sales balance. Plus, it could sit half used and wasted. The best approach to design is to design around your daily energy needs 
in the number of hours or days you want to run on battery when the sun is not shining. When your battery bank is sized properly, it will give you efficiency, reliability, and a long lifespan without breaking the bed. Finally, even if the, the, the numbers look good, there is one last thing you, that would determine whether your investment pays off or frustrates you. And that is the brand. This is something that often makes the biggest difference. When you go with an established brand of a lithium battery, you are not just buying a battery. You are buying peace of mind and you are making your investment future-proof. A strong brand plus a knowledgeable installer is the recipe for a good solar experience. Here's what good brands guarantee you. A proper reliable BMS that actually protects your battery cells. That's what a good brand can guarantee you. Another thing is the honesty specifications. The things like C rating, the charge cycles, and usable stored energy are given as they are. And another thing a good brand guarantee you is a clear user-friendly interface that shows you the charge levels, the alarms, and the overall system health. Good brands guarantee you as well a seamless communication with trusted innovator brands. And good brands also guarantee you easy to find online support and documentation in the form of manuals, updates, technical references, and help whenever you need it. And there is another big advantage, the ease of upgrading. Smaller or unknown brands often change their models quickly, and the new ones do not work with older ones. That means if you want to expand your system in future, you may be forced to, to throw away your old batteries. With established brands, that is very rare. Take a popular lithium battery brand called Pylontech for example. There are different models, even of different sizes, are designed to work together. So if you do, if, if, if you bought a battery two years back and today you want to add another one without throwing away your original one, you can put it right there. That is what future proof looks like. Unknown brands might look cheaper up front, but when you need support, upgrades or spares, you'll be left stranded. With a reputable brand, you are buying reliability, long-term value, and the confidence that your system can grow with you. So, when choosing a lithium battery, always consider these five things. Number one, BMS availability. If the battery management system works and if it is compatible with industry standard inverters. Number two, the C rating, which is how fast you can charge or discharge your battery. Number three, the charge cycles, which corresponds to the battery's lifespan. Number four, correct battery bank size for your needs. And number five, consider working with established plans with an online presence and support. If you follow this, you will avoid costly mistakes and invest in a battery that keeps your home or business powered for years. I would love to hear from you. Which of these points was new to you or which one do you think most people ignore? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And before you go, make sure you subscribe because in our next video, we'll be talking about the top five best lithium batteries in Zimbabwe 2025. Trust me, you do not want to miss this one. Until next time, bye for now.